Framer is quickly becoming the new standard for web development among designers. But Figma is still the queen of pure design work. So in this video, we'll look at the four tricks that will make your Figma to Framer export smooth as butter and 100% accurate. Now, let's jump straight in. So the first thing you want to do when getting ready to export your things from Figma to Framer is to make sure that you've set up your auto layouts correctly. And this is not just good for your designs in Figma, obviously. This is very good for Framer and for web development in general. Framer has something called stacks and that is exactly the same thing as auto layouts. They work in the exact same way. Now, when it comes to web development, we have the Flexbox model or Flexbox. It also works in the exact same way. So with that in mind, I think it makes sense for us designers to really try to design things in the way they're supposed to be developed in the real world or on real websites. So how do we set up auto layouts for a good framer export then? Well, I tend to really use auto layouts a lot. You'll see here, if we click on this landing page frame or this landing page auto layout, you'll see that I have an auto layout that encapsulates auto layouts on auto layouts on auto layouts. And this gives us so much control. We can grab our items, throw them around like this. We can change the distance between our items like this. We can change the position of our items within the auto layouts and much more. Now, exactly what I did here, if we set it up correctly here in Figma, we will be able to do the same thing in Framer. So that's why I really, really suggest that you get your auto layouts correctly. Now, if you don't know how to use auto layouts in Figma, I do have a tutorial on that. You can check it in the top right corner. So that's number one, set up your auto layouts. Number two is to define your constraints and your resizing. This will really help you with responsiveness. So let me give you some examples here. So this is the first container, the hero section that you saw. I've added some red strokes to different components or different containers here to, to highlight some of the things I want to talk about. If we look at this, for example, the nav, you can see that I've set the resizing, the horizontal resizing to be fixed. So when we decrease the size of this, this is gonna stay fixed, this nav, when it comes to the width. So if we set it up correctly here in Figma, it is gonna be correctly set up in Framer as well. I've set it to be fixed. I've set the constraints here to be center, so it stays in the center, and I've set it to be attached to the top. I've also set it to be absolute position. So it always stays in the top. It puts itself on top of everything. It doesn't go into the regular auto layout flow. So that's the nav. We have some constraints, we have some resizing. The same for this. If we look at this container in here, you can see that this heading plus body container has a resizing of fill. And if we look at this text layer in here, the body text, it also has fill. So when I resize this very far down, now this text is supposed to be decreased in size as well uh, at this breakpoint, and the nav is gonna change. But now the text is gonna be dynamic. You can see how it resizes depending on the width there. So just setting up these things correctly will really help you when you're about to export. Same for this, you can see that we have a container. This is an auto layout. I've set the padding here to always be 24 pixels. So this image in here, this hero container that contains the image you can see here, 
is always going to adhere to that. It's always going to be 24 pixels from the sides and the image will also responsively increase or decrease in size. So setting these things up correctly will lead to less figuring out in Framer. So that's number two. Then we have number three, and this is more of a mindset, more of a mental model, thinking about breakpoints. And like I said, this is not for export. This is just for guidelines. So when we export things to Framer, we don't export one frame for desktop, one frame for tablet, and one for mobile. No, we export only one frame. So I always start with desktop, and then in Framer, you would add the different breakpoints and do the design work in Framer. But what I suggest is that you actually do the design work first in Figma so that you know how you want everything to look responsively, because then you're not going to get into the situation where you start doing ad hoc designing inside of Framer. You already know what everything is going to look like. Let's go to the last one, and this is about the export. So in Framer, we can export individual frames, and I like to treat this like a bunch of Lego pieces. So whatever we design in Figma can either be exported like a whole, like this. I could export all of these at a time into Framer if I want to. So this makes sense when we want to set up the project in the beginning, we would take all our sections and export them into Framer. But as you move forward, as you get further into your project, you might realize that, oh, I need this icon or I need to change this little thing here. Then you can go back to Figma and just create one little thing. So maybe we would want to change something in the nav. This here maybe should be wallpaper TM TM. And now I could take just this and export this into Framer. So just this frame here, or this auto layout could be exported as well. So treat everything like Lego pieces. And when you're about to export, I like using the quick menu, which is command or control plus P or slash. So if I go to the quick menu here, you can see that I have the Framer plugin as the first result. This is because I've been using it a lot in this file. So it's very easy for us to export things. It goes super quickly. So if I just target this hero, these cards and this landing, this should actually be just, sorry, this should be just a ticker like that. So cards, ticker and hero and I go Command-P, I hit Enter. You can see here, copying layers in the bottom. It's gonna load for a bit. There we go. So it copied 47 layers and says paste in Framer. So I go into Framer. This is the Framer dashboard. Now from here, I just want to create a new canvas or a new project. So I click New, I go to Blank Site and I click Create Project. In the project, you have to make sure that your canvas or your frame here is set to the correct width. And my width that I'm using for my designs here is 1440. So we need to change from 1200 to 1440. And once that's done, I'll just copy paste in here. So Command V. You can see uploading Figma images here. And there we go, it's uploaded. Then in the top left corner here, I can go to layers and I can see that all the layers are in here. Now, if you want to get more familiar with the Framer UI as a Figma user, I do have a tutorial on that as well. You can see it in the top right corner here. Another thing I like doing once I've exported things over here is I want to target this desktop frame. And I want to go to the height settings here in the right sidebar. And I changed this from fixed to fit content. Now this is also gonna become an auto layout or as we call it in Framer, a stack. 
And now we have the exact same behavior as we had inside of Figma, but inside of Framer instead. Now, the next step from here would be to set up your Framer project in the correct way. And I happen to have a video on that that you can check out here somewhere. Until the next one though, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.